Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, this is part two of the conservation video. Um, in this video, I'm going to do more calculations and um, talk about the bar graphs because those are definitely some things you're going to see on your next um, exam coming up. Um, I say exam, you quiz, you know what I mean um, at this point. I like these examples because this is the conceptual part of physics, which to some of you I know is, is challenging. So um, definitely take some time to do this. There's a worksheet on the, um, on this section. You'll see it with solutions, of course, um, but definitely practice this before the uh, quiz so you can kind of get a sense of how to do this and what you need to do to um, to emphasize these, um, these concepts. So um, I'm going to do a bunch right here, so hopefully that will be helpful for you. Um, okay, so we're going to basically model the energy here um, with these um, bar graphs. Hopefully that's, I don't know, for me it screenshots it. I'm not sure what it looks like with you. So let's see. A ball falls from the top of the pillar to the ground below. The initial state of the ball is at rest at the top of the pillar, and the final state of the ball um, is just prior to striking the ground. Ignore air resistance. So I'm just, as always, like to annotate my drawing. So it says... Um, the initial velocity zero at the top. Now, hopefully it seems obvious that there is some sort of height at the top. We don't know what the height is. We'll just put it as H, but there's height up here and no velocity. Now the pillar moves out of the way and then it says the final state. So it actually tells us what to look at. The initial state is at rest at the top. Final state is right before. So right before the height is going to be zero at that point. Um, yes, there is a tiny little height here, but we can ignore that tiny little height um, and just simplify it and say zero. And we're gonna have a known value here, some velocity like this. Now, if I think about the environment and what it can do to change the work on the system, um, I think air resistance would be it, but it says to ignore air resistance, uh, which means that um, there is no work done here. Air resistance is like a form of friction. No work. So, the way we do this part is the following. We're going to fill in these bar graphs. Now, when we do, we have to make sure that the energy before equals the energy after. That's very, very, very important. Um, and this, the heights of these don't matter. Um, it's just, um, so you could do three, you can do five, it doesn't matter. Um, but the concept has to match. In other words, this before has to equal after. Now, very important, it says no work, which means that this will be zero. Now notice that I drew a line right at the zero to signify that I considered the work and that I didn't skip the question, <laughs> but it's at a zero mark. Um, and that's how this works. Notice that zero is in the middle of these graphs. We're not starting at the bottom. A lot of people do this by accident. If we go below to zero, that's taking away energy. If we go above the zero, we're going to, um, what was I say? Um, go above the zero, we're going to add energy. Now, another important thing to note, too, is the fact that um, when we do this, because there's no work, that the total energy of the system should remain the same. So I'll show you what this means. So at the initial energy of this, we have no velocity. So this would be zero. So once again, um, that's kind of I want you to put a line that signifies zero. So I know that you thought about it and you didn't skip it, okay? Um, and then what you're going to do is notice that we have height. And we could fill up as many bars. Now, we're not below anything, so we're not going to make this negative. Um, we're increasing our height here. 
And since it's not given, you can fill this up as much or as little as you want. Uh, because I, um, yeah, that's it's fine. I was changing the colors here. So when it comes to it, since I have all the boxes, I'm going to fill up from here all the way to the top. I have my choice to do that. I can make three boxes, four boxes, five boxes. I made it five boxes. So the potential energy is full and the velocity is zero. And there's no work done to the system, which means that we should see five blocks on this side. Um, since the height is zero, the five blocks, well, what's going to happen is I have to match this side and this side because there's no work. So if I did five blocks here, it must be five blocks here. If I did four blocks here, it must be four blocks here. You could treat it like math. Zero plus five plus zero has to equal five plus zero. And I hope you notice that you get five is equal to five. And we have energy conserved in this case like that. So this is how you solve one example of the bar graph um, of an object with no work because we ignored air resistance of an object falling. So this is kind of a similar idea. They have it as potential energy gravitational um, and kinetic energy. Did I do that wrong? Oh boy, I don't think so. No, I was right, okay, I just got scared for a second. Um, yeah, kinetic energy, so it's the same thing. So this kind of talks about all the things and why, um, just written nicely um, for you. So let's take a look at this one, this one's tricky. A car skids from a high speed, so that means some sort of velocity. It comes to a stop, which means zero velocity at the end point with its brakes applied. The initial state of the car is traveling at a high speed. The final car is at rest, which we kind of determined. The force of friction does work. Excuse me does work on this, thus changing the total mechanical energy. So what does this look like? Well, the car starts from a high speed, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill it all in because why not? It's a high speed. Now, if we look, there is no height here, right? There's no hill, there's no height change, so there's no potential energy. In fact, both sides have no potential energy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I hope that you agree with me that this is on a level ground. Now the car has to stop at the end. Whoa. Look at our equation. Zero plus zero, right? We have work done in the system, so the final energy does not equal the initial energy. And that's okay if we have work, which is what we do. We have five here plus zero. So essentially we have to figure out what number we have to put here to make this equal to zero. And hopefully you recognize that that number should be negative five, right? Five plus negative five equals zero. So what I'm gonna do is bubble in five units of work here. So I start here, but then I do work on the system. So this is kind of happening during, not at the beginning, not at the end. This is like during. So five minus five equals zero. So this side equals zero and this side equals zero, which is good. But if you look at just the energy though, five, not the work, just the energy and zero, you started off with more energy than you had, um, than you ended with, right? Um, is not equal to this. There was work done on the system. In fact, 
because of this condition, um, we had negative work, which is work done by friction here. So that's another type of scenario. The problem with these is that all scenarios are different and you have to read them carefully. Um, which makes them challenging. There's no like memorization of this. You have to just take it step by step, dissect the question, pick out what heights there are, if there's friction, if someone's pushing, all those things are really important to consider when you do these. Um, now again, the heights of these don't matter. So just clearing the board for a quick moment and say it was you that was doing this and you did this. I say three, zero, negative three, zero, zero, that is full credit. Um, the heights are relative. In other words, it doesn't matter as long as it matches your theory. What is not right if you did something like this? Some people have done something like this. This is wrong. The reason why is because you have kinetic energy, but if you add work, it's going to make you go faster, not slower, which is what you have here. In order for this to work out, you would have to have three bars of kinetic and three, one, two, three bars of uh, work here. So this is wrong if you have it like this, because you're not adding work, you're taking away work. Something else that people do too um, is they'll do something like this and they'll do negative work but then put it in potential or something like that with zero here. Um, I hope you notice that this is also wrong because there is no height change here. So like I said this is all about analyzing each of the cases and understanding um, um, you know what parts have to do with um, kinetic energy, potential energy, and elastic. And this is just the same thing presented here. Um, so why don't you pause the video? And of course, this is what I would do in class. I would actually have you and a partner work on this. So I highly recommend, although it seems silly, and I know it's so much easier just to have me explain this and skip it, <laughs> you should do it. Um, you really need to sit down and work it out and um, think about it and see and make mistakes. and. Um, and that's okay because you're just trying to figure out what you know and don't know about this. So I'm going to pause for a second. For you to pause, that is. Okay. I'm assuming you paused. I hope you paused. It's really for your benefit. And I'm going to go through this example. So our initial case is a skier at some height above a hill. She utilizes her poles to propel herself. She's adding work, right? Because when you propel yourself, you're going faster, okay? Thus changing the total mechanical energy. The initial state's at the top of the hill, um, and then the final state is a different hill, but smaller. It says we're at rest at the top, and we're moving here. And then there was work added during this process. Boy, complicated, right? Okay, so the kinetic energy in the initial is zero, so that's zero. Uh, we have a big height, so I'm going to go ahead and fill all of this in for height. Once again, the height itself is relative. You could have done four, you could have done three. But we're adding work um, to the system. So I'm going to add two bars um, of work to this. Um, why did I choose two and not five? Um, because it makes bubbling this side easier to pick smaller work values than large ones. Um, so the final point would be the following. So the final energy. So I actually, I always start with, when I do the final, I always start with PE because PE is fixed. You That can't change with the scenario. So in other words, I look at the PE initial and I saw that I had a high height. I look at the PE final, I find that my height's lower. Um, I'm going to pick, again, you can pick these, um, I'm going to pick lower by two. 
doesn't matter. Um, and this is the tricky part. So it might be good to do this method, do zero plus I have five here, plus I have two here. Now this side should be the same, right? Zero plus five plus two is seven. I have to make it equal to seven. Right now, I have this as two bars. To make this equal to seven, my kinetic energy has to be five bars. So that's how this would work out. Um, this is one solution to this question. Um, so again, um, if you look at just the energy, again, the word is energy, not work. If I look at just the energy, you will find once again that pattern that the total initial energy is five and the total final energy is seven. The initial energy is not equal to the final because we had work done. And in fact, we added work. And if you notice that the final is greater than the initial because we pushed our skis. And hopefully that makes total sense to you. But this works out too when you add the work that these, the equal signs should be balanced when you do it. Um, just for funsies, really quick, I'll show you another solution to the question. This would be considered correct because if I did zero, I chose three to be random, and I chose four here to be random. It's totally random that it equals to seven. I did not plan that at all. I literally just made this up. But it has to equal one seven this side. So if I have one here, then this has to be six. Um, so actually I added too many here. So about six should be about here like that. So we need it to equal to seven here. So seven and seven. Um, this is another solution. Um, the good and bad news, there's many solutions. Um, what you need to do, and the bad news is there's many solutions, so you can't memorize these. Um, but the important thing is this balance act that you're doing right here, putting the work in the right spot. Notice that the work is positive, so it's above the zero line. That's important that it's not below in this case as well, and that these sides match and it models the scenario. So be very careful when it comes to that. Um, here's another one I'm gonna do much quicker. Hot Wheels car starts at the top at rest and rolls down the incline through a loop. The initial state of the car is at top of the rest. The final state is the bottom. Friction and air resistance have a significant effect on the car. This is going to take away energy like that. So um, at the rest, we'll be here at the top of the hill. I'm going to do four. So I have four right here. Um, because why not? Um, but the important part is this has to be zero because it's at rest. This has to have height because we're at some arbitrary height. Um, the other part is that we have work done on the hill, but then it says the car is in motion. So it's not zero here, but it has to be, um, well, let's see, let's add two here. Um, so what I did is I started this plus four minus two. So there's no height, so this has to be zero. Notice I did this first, just like I said before. To make this balance, this must have two here, like that. So I call this two, because this whole thing equals two on this side, and this whole thing equals two on this side. These numbers can change, these heights can change. What I'm looking for is a positive number here, a zero here, this is negative, 
and this balances what you did on that side. That's what I'm looking for when I grade this. Don't know how I'm going to do this online, but I'm going to do this online. I'll make it work. Okay. Like I said, there's a million examples of this. Um, download the worksheet, work them out, ask questions, bring them next Wednesday, um, especially with some of those because they can be challenging. Ooh, another fun puzzle. I can present this type of question. Like I showed you earlier, um, Another way to apply conservation of energy is the fact that if I add these two numbers up at any one point, they're going to be the same. So I could take away values, so you have to fill it in kind of like a puzzle. Now, first step is you got to find, I have to give you something like this. <laughs> I have to give you two of them so you can actually add them up and figure it out. Um, if I don't, then the problem is not doable. So 40,000 joules here. There we go. So the total mechanical energy at any one point, because the system's conserved, should be 40,000. So with that said, 0 plus 40,000 will equal 40,000. This part is 20 and 20 equals 40,000. This will be 15 and 20. Um, this one would be 35. I'm doing the easy ones as you can see. Uh, I guess I'll do that one. So I'm taking my calculator 40,000 minus 7,500. So when I do that, it gives me 32,500 32, right here. This is where I get a lot of people that are like lost my mind because why wouldn't you give me two values? Um, well, one of them, if I don't give you them, is usually a zero. Now, if you look at it, if you start here on a roller coaster and you go all the way down like that, what's most likely going to be zero? The height or the motion. Pat yourself in the back because I'm pretty sure you said the height at the bottom should be zero. Look at that. It's the same thing here, which means that this has to be 40,000. To make it work. Like I said, people lose their minds over these two. They're like, oh, totally different problem. <laughs> use your common sense, use your intuition. If you're at the bottom of something, if this didn't get any lower, then that's the bottom. We can assume zero uh, potential. Now pay attention because these refer to specific locations. Location A is here. Zero kinetic energy, 40,000. I chose the bubble four blocks. You can do five. It doesn't matter once again. But if I add kinetic and potential, the total should be the same. So zero plus four should equal four. I can't believe I mix that up. We all make silly mistakes. It's okay. That's what I'm looking for each time. B is here. So a lot of people did B right here by accident. So just be mindful that B is here. It's 50-50. 50, 50, 2 plus 2 should equal 4. Hopefully you get this. C is here. So I have more kinetic than potential. I did three and one and four. Again, the heights don't really matter. The balancing does. D is at the bottom here. All kinetic. No potential. TME is super boring. In fact, you can even just do this the whole time. As long as you set it to four, it always will be four. And E is this location which is a teeny tiny amount of PE and a big amount of this, so a little less like that. So there you have it go with that. So that's how you can solve both the, um, the bar graph and the, the numerical values here. We could take this a step further. 
um, we can go ahead and do a question like this. Um, now, instead, I gave you the values. Um, so same thing, you have to look at the two values here. And you have to add them up to get the TME. So the TME is 10 joules in this case. So you can see that. Now, um, same thing. So if I look at this, if this has to equal to 10 joules, then 2 plus 8 will equal 10. 0 plus 10 will equal 10. Uh-oh, the double blank. Now, look at the scenario to get the answer for this. Notice there's a line here, which means it's the same height as this. So it's going to be basically the same condition as the initial. So PE will be 10, and this will be 0. So if two numbers are missing, look at the scenario. Um, it's usually um, easier to tell what's going on if that's the case. I could take this a step further. I can give blanks for all of these, as you can see. So check this out. It wants you to find the height. Height comes from gravitational potential energy because that's mgh. In this question, notice that it's given 10 joules for this moment. So 10 joules is equal to mass, which is given to times 9.81 times h. If I solve for h, 2 times 9.81, 10 divided by the answer gives me 0 0.51 meters for my height. So if I'm looking for height, I need to use potential. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and solve this one too because it's asking for the same thing. So in this case, PE is 2 joules. 2 joules is equal to um, 2, which is the mass, times 9.81, which is G. Solve for H. 2 times 9.81 divided by 2. Yeah, that is, that is it. Okay, the height. Uh, wait a second, hold on. What did I do here? Two joules, yeah, is equal to two times 9.81. I'm doing, okay, sorry. Man, I'm having trouble today. I did the math wrong, there we go, that's better, H. 0 0.1 oh, 2 rounding here. And there you have it. When it comes to velocity, you have to use kinetic energy because kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So for this question, kinetic energy is 8. Oops, one half, two kilograms is the mass, solving the squared. 0.5 times two, so eight divided by one, square root of the answer, gives me 2.82 meters per second. And that is the answer here, 2.82 meters per second. And then rinse and repeat. The height here, they want the height, but the height is zero, um, the potential energy is zero, so that's nice and easy because then that means the height must be zero at this point. But then I need to find the velocity. So 10 joules is equal to 1 half times 2 times v squared. v is essentially the square root of 10. 
and this becomes 3.1 meters per second here. And lastly, I need to find height again, but notice that this condition is the same as the initial condition. So I don't have to use, um, I don't have to calculate it again because it's the same value here. So that's kind of a nice little shortcut with that. So taking it a step further, you can do these types of calculations. Now the other thing you could do is the bar graph for each of those locations. So TME, no matter what you choose, should always be the same. So this, I don't even need to look at. I chose five because why not five? There we go. And then what do we what do we have? So all potential, no kinetic. All potential, no kinetic. Two potential, eight kinetic. Zero potential, all kinetic. All potential, zero kinetic. So that's what the bar graph looks like in this scenario. So each time I'm looking at what's the the energies here and then making them into a bar graph here and deciding um, how to execute the graphs. The most important thing is that the TME is always the same and it adds up to these two. If you do a different height value, two or three or four, that doesn't matter as long as it matches the scenario and the situation. Um, ignore that. I do want to talk about two more things. Um, I know there's a homework question which drives everybody nuts um, and they don't give you the mass. So when it comes down to doing um, a longer version, you can actually use this version. In most cases, the problems I give online are going to be no work cases. There's no friction or anything like that. I'll just do this conceptual. Work will always be a conceptual. Um, so, like I said, remember that this is the initial, and this is the initial potential, so the total mechanical energy. So, this would be the total, right? And about 95% of your questions are just going to be the gravitational potential energy. So, what you can do is you could use this equation... Oops. And then I notice an error here. There we go, like that. The initial and the final. You can use this equation, the conservation of energy equation here, like that, which is helpful for solving questions. Another neat little trick. Just going to write it out again. So what happens a lot, two tricks actually, I said one, I'm going to give you two. Um, trick one, mass is canceled. So you don't need mass um, in problems. So I know there's one homework question where it doesn't give you the mass and you're just like, ah, um, which, yeah, that's, that's legit. But if you have the same variable on each side, you can actually cancel them all out, which leaves this weird but correct rendition. Which you can use. So this is trick one. Trick two is the following. Anytime you have a change of height,
you go from height to motion, what happens is, is this big long equation, I'm going to write it again. I give a ball here at some height h, i, and vi is 0, and then you have hf is 0, and some velocity final. Well, you could do this handy little trick. The initial velocity is zero, so this whole term goes to zero. And the final height is zero, so that whole term goes to zero. So you could rewrite height changes for problems that um, change that go from height to motion. This is a height to motion problem. And you can combine trick one and cancel the masses. And therefore, if I move the two up, I get two GHI is equal to VF squared, or in other words, two GHI is equal to VF. So the speed at the bottom of a ramp or a roller coaster or a slide, however you want to think about it. First of all, it's just dependent on the height, which makes sense. But the weird thing, it um, does not depend on mass. Which means if you were on a slide, this is like looking at a slide, like if I'm on the slide with my daughter, we both would have the same speed at the bottom as long as we're at the same height. What? Fun slide facts. <laughs> so um, technically, assuming no friction, I would not be able to race my daughter down the slide because we'd get to the end at the same rate. So um, speed is the same on slide regardless of mass slash no friction. We don't consider friction. If we consider friction, what happens is the person with the larger friction would be slower and that person would go faster. Um, uh, that has to do with the normal force of friction, but we won't get into that. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. This equation is helpful for solving questions that involve like a roller coaster at multiple heights and all that fun stuff. Um, this question, you know, this is good for solving the velocity at the bottom of things, um, which could be helpful as well. All right, well, I hope, um, I hope everything was clear. Um, and just a reminder, the video, we did two tasks that I'm definitely going to test you on. I'm definitely going to test you on bar graphs. Um, drawing slash um, online drawing or I don't know I haven't figured it out yet but we're definitely going to have that online because that actually is really telling for me I can see if you understand how to analyze scenarios um, and then you'll do some calculations um, what's going to actually look like on your exam um, with something more like this because this basically covers everything if you can do the bar graph if you can calculate heights or velocities of a given scenario um, then I could see that you understand these concepts so, in um, just finishing up my summary, there you go. Um, in order to maintain energy, the condition is no work. Um, if you increase energy, there was positive work done, and if you have 
If your energy decreased, then you have negative work. And this is all run by the conservation of energy. Now, conservation of energy says that energy is transferred, and you can't make it from forms. I spelled that wrong. Sorry. Um, you can't make magic. You can't just make energy out of thin air. Not created. Um, it is transferred. Um, and now the transfers in physics, um, because there's more transfers, there's way more transfers of energy, um, will be between the three types, kinetic, potential, and not too much with elastic, but I'll, I'll definitely have some questions regarding elastic, but I'm going to heavily weight this when it comes down to the transformations in physics. Okay, um, I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, please bring them to uh, Wednesday's class, and I will be happy to address any concerns or questions with everything. Uh, best of luck, everyone. Goodbye.